Hey, welcome to the Strong Roots Podcast. My name is Kristen Hill, and we are so excited that you're tuning in today. Our prayer is that you would move one step closer to Jesus through this series. So go ahead and check out this next episode. Hey, Strong Roots. I'm so excited to be here with Chloe. We are doing our God Story season, and I really love the way that God has moved in your story and led you to Him. So thank you for being here and being willing to share this with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so right off the bat, I want to just open up with, what was your life like before you chose to make Jesus your leader and forgiver? So before I chose to follow Jesus, my life was very me-centered. Yeah. Um, me centered as in all the decisions I made were about me. Mm -hmm. um, friends I made were about me. Yeah. Friendships I had were about me. And, you know, it reflected in um, my life, my the sports I was in in, in high school and middle school, and um, just everything around me had to be about me. Right. And also, like, just I didn't ever seek advice. I wanted control. Ooh, that's good. Um, yeah, I wanted control over what was going on in, in my circle, who was in my circle, why they were in my circle, and um, just having that control made me feel safe. Yeah. And, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a really great answer because I think that's almost the root to all the other symptoms of why we do what we do before right. Christ. Yeah. So I, I love that answer. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. When was the turning point? of you choosing to follow Jesus? So I thought about this. Mm -hmm. um, I initially gave my life to Christ in middle school. Yeah. Um, I went to church camp. They had a dedication night is what yeah. they would call it. And all yeah. of our um, cabin mates, we all gave our lives to Christ that night at camp. But I also remember when I moved here, I met with you. Yeah. And that was a moment that was a big turning point for me because right. I had lived in the path of following Jesus, but I don't think that my heart was in it. Mm -hmm. And I remember us meeting pretty much for the first time. Right. And doing that again. Yeah. And just, you know, committing my life to Jesus again and recognizing I'm not living the way that I should be. Right. And, you know, so I think of those two moments. But, right. yeah. I remember vividly because it was in the next step class. Yes. That we have at church. It's our way to... You know, people take a next step, but um, we watched somebody's God Story video yes. in it. And then I, when we we met one on one, I was like, "So, what do you think?" And then you're just like, "Yeah, I'm not there." I, no. <laughs> you're just, I loved how blunt yeah. and honest you're like, "I haven't done that." Yeah. And it was, it has been really cool seeing God change you. Yeah. And I have felt that change since even we've talked. So. Yeah. And that's that was like three years ago. It feels like I think. Yeah. So it's been a while. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. So how has life been after making the decision to go all in with Jesus? Um, it's not perfect. Yes. That's something I had to remind myself. It's it's not a perfect path. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's things that you have to change, and it takes time for change. And mm -hmm. I think for me, it was um, just like understanding what I'm going through and how I can see growth through that. Right. Um but also recognizing good things and recognizing blessings that have been placed in my life yeah. um, that show God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I I want to say it's been easy, but it's not. Yeah. But now I think as I've matured and continue growing, I'm able to recognize things that are hard and how to handle them instead of being an emotional wreck. Yes. But, I think that's such a, it's an honest answer. I mean, he says, pick up your cross and follow me. Like, it is hard. Yeah. yeah. I, it love, I love that no matter how devoted you are to Christ, he is always spurring us on. The Holy Spirit is to become, mm -hmm. all right, level up. Yeah. Now the next thing to be yeah. more like him. And change is hard. And that's a hard reality, too. Yes. It's hard to just be like, okay, let's seize the day. <laughs> Whatever comes my way. And, yes. and I have bad days. But I also have really good days where I can reflect and know mm -hmm. that he was there. And he gave me courage or he guided me. And yeah. and that's what matters to me. And he uses it. Yes. Even our mm -hmm. sins, our trip-ups, like, with him and giving it to him, he uses it to make us better. Yeah. Which yeah. is an, an encouragement. Even as much as we wish, like, 
dang it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to deal with that today. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So true. So mm-hmm. once you made the decision to follow Jesus, was there an immediate profound change or was the change more subtle? I think the change was subtle for me. Mm-hmm. Like kind of what I just said. Um, it hasn't been easy, but I can look back at the time um, from like high school to college and I see a lot of growth, mm-hmm. but I also see a lot of challenges that I went through that yeah. I didn't understand the why, Right. but I just had to trust. And in that time, I think I developed, developed a strong trust in Jesus. Right. And knowing that, I've been able to see the change, but I would say it was more subtle. It wasn't like, I'm a perfect person. Right. I'm good at things now and I have a good attitude all the time. Right. No, that's not how it was. I found that different people... God chooses to work on different things right away. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the same for everyone. So what do you feel like God started changing first in you? I would say the way that I am in friendships. Yeah. Um, I dealt with a lot of jealousy and I, I would be lying if I said I didn't like still struggle with that. Yeah. Um, but definitely I struggled with jealousy, my friends having new friends. And I even saw it in my other friends. They were jealous of me having new friends as well. Right. Um, so I think the way I function in friendships, that's that's what changed immediately. That's cool. Yeah. Cause that's I, miraculous. Yeah. It's, and it was a hard change. But mm-hmm. I mean, once you view your friendships as something that's good, yeah. instead of constantly comparing one another, it changes. Right. And it changes for the better. Oh, yeah, because yeah. it can't help but, like, this, having a great relationship with God, mm-hmm. like, can't help but overflow yes. with the people around you. And I still see changes now. That's awesome. And even just, you know, as I make new friends, yeah. it's completely different compared to when I made new friends in 2015 or, you know. Right. A few years ago, even, but. Your mindset changes. Yeah. So what's the most transformational truth? that you've discovered since following Jesus? Okay, this one, I loved this question. (laughs) Um, I think like with my worst days, Mm -hmm. I'm still loved. And also other people are equally loved by Jesus. Yeah. It's hard for me, I should say, it was hard for me when someone would hurt my feelings or, you know, hurt me. I had to step back and be like, you know what? They are a child of God. Yeah. And they still get the love that I do, even though we don't deserve it. Even though they know that maybe they hurt me or they don't know, they're still loved. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a transformational truth because it's hard to do that. It's hard to humble ourselves to be like, they're not perfect. Neither am I. Mm -hmm. Why am I? (laughs) Yes. Why am I expecting them to, you know, live up to this standard that's not that none of us can? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here not perfect, but I'm expecting you to understand what you did wrong. Right? And yeah. Yeah, that's, we all fall short. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think recognizing that was really good for me. Yeah. Because then I didn't have these standards of people mm-hmm. and put these expectations on people. Oh, that's so good. So I'm really curious about this next question. Okay. Have you had a personal encounter with God? Yes. Yeah. So I have two different things. Yes. Um, I am really into journaling. Yes. I pray when I journal. I write out my prayers or simply I'll just journal. Right. And I can look back in random journals where I was journaling to God and see him moving. Like oh. in the moment, it didn't feel like it. Right. But then I look back a year later, I'm like, that, why did I not see this? That's but so I was cool. praying about this, and he was answering my prayers right there. Yeah. I think another, my second part is in nature. Yeah. Um, I was telling my husband, I really feel like I can encounter God in nature. And that wow. sounds weird, but we took a trip to Iceland a few years ago, and we were on a mountain. And I just remember being like, how... How can you even, fa- like, how do I even fathom the love for, like, that Jesus has for me? Wow. And he created all of this. Right. And so I think in that, I'm able to also just love the, the creation that he made and yes. see his beauty through nature. And it can be simple as going on a walk. Yeah. And recognizing the fall and, like, the changes of colors. Yes. I love that. Yes. But, like, specifically mm-hmm. if we're going hiking or you know, in Iceland, it's just like insanely beautiful there and you just can't help but be in awe. And 
that's cool because it's just a feeling that you don't normally get. But, Absolutely. So yeah. do you, would you say you hear from God? In my prayers, I do. Yeah. yeah. I also think like with journaling, I do. I can look back and see his answers and I can see his truth being revealed. But even now, I think more in prayer, I can hear mm -hmm. him. Or if I'm praying and then the next day I'm praying again, I can feel like a sense of this is kind of what you should do or this is what I'm leading you to. So. Is that amazing? Yes. And I used to be a huge skeptic about that. I'm <laughs> yes. like, okay, I'm not going to hear from him when I pray, but I do. Yeah. And I purposefully like to set aside time before mm. bed to just pray. And it's not even just like, oh, I need you to fix this, that, and the other. Right. It's, I just want to talk. Yeah. And I want to tell you the things in my day that didn't go well or right. that did. So that's when I feel like I can hear from him and yeah, hear from him. I would agree. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. So what has surprised you the most about choosing to follow Jesus? I would say, I would say that people judge my decisions. Hmm. How so? Um, I would just say like in conversation, they're going to judge my lifestyle. Okay. So an example would be, oh, you go to church, but you don't do X, Y, and Z anymore. Or, oh, I don't see you hanging out with those people anymore. It's, is it because you go to church? Yeah. And I think those have been comments that have led me to growth. Right. And recognizing that this path is not easy. Right. But I'm given courage by God to get through it. Oh. And that helps me. Absolutely. So. I think that's encouraging for other people to hear mm -hmm. because I've had, I feel like there's a lot of people, especially younger, yeah, who when you choose to follow Jesus and your life radically changes, yeah. your choices change. It's a lifestyle change. It is. It's everything. And it's hard for others mm -hmm. to be supportive of it. And I don't say that as in everyone, but for certain people in your life, it can be hard to accept that this person is changing and it's for the good. Right. <laughs> but they feel left behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So do you have some questions for me that you'd like yes. to ask? I do. So when looking at different um, relationships in your life, what has changed the most in them since you followed Jesus? <sighs> that's, that's a hard, hard question. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> we talk, okay, so we talk in marriage, friendships, or both? Both. Okay. Whatever sticks out to you the most. Yes. I think, and I, you know, it's interesting. I feel like all Christians would might answer this a little differently. I think one of my greatest sins is pride. Mm. Like, I, I think I live my life in a way where I don't want to get, I want to do everything right, so I don't get confronted. So I, you know, I don't yeah. know, fade in the background a little yeah. bit. But in relationships, like, if, well, let's just use marriage, I think I would never admit I was wrong, ever. Like, feel that. <laughs> it Coming was, from a stubborn person, yes. I feel that. And that was the way I was raised in a way, too. Mm -hmm. Like, my parents were never wrong. Mm. So I think I imagine I'm going to grow up and I'm never going to be wrong. I'm going to yes. work as hard as I can to be good. Mm -hmm. And then I get to not be wrong, yeah. you know? And so I think Christ in not only my marriage, but friendships, being able to admit that I am very wrong mm -hmm. and... Even, and then I think, so being able to admit I was wrong was really hard, but then almost God's leveling me up, like, then when I had good intentions. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I didn't mean to blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But, like, being able to say I'm wrong, even when my heart was good. Like, that in friendships, because I feel like me being able to admit I am wrong and that I am sinful and that I, I am, make mistakes, that's how we can actually have a good mm -hmm. relationship. Like, no one yeah. wants to have a relationship with someone who thinks they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome all the time. <laughs> well, and you can't confront them and you yeah. can't grow. And I think mm -hmm. there is no way, there is no way that I, I still, it's hard for me. Mm -hmm. Like that if, apart from Christ, apart from the Holy Spirit, that I would be able to admit that I was wrong and truly lay down my life and serve my husband and friends the way that I do. Love that. So, thank you. <laughs> it's hard though, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'm stubborn and I'm the same way. It's a wrestling match. Okay, the second one. How do you respond to others who aren't believers that question you and your faith? Hmm, that is good. So give me a little more context. Like question like, are you really a Christian? Or like, what are we saying here? You used to be this way, mm -hmm. but now you're this way. Yes. I, I guess like that's yeah, my mindset. 
I did have friends like that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I moved here and he was the pastor. So now all my relationships here, everyone yeah. knows I'm a Christian, yeah. you know? So I would have to go back to about your age when I did choose to follow Jesus. I think I was 25. Mm -hmm. um, but so how do I, how did I, how should we respond to them? I think that honestly, grace, mm -hmm. love, forgiveness. I think, I think it's, under, and truly having compassion, like, they're grieving the loss of who you used to be. Because mm -hmm. the verse, like, the old is gone, the new has come. Like, we literally are new people. So they are sad. Like, they lost someone. Yeah. And this new ver this new person, they weren't friends with. Mm -mm. And I think they're, like, wrestling with, do I even want, do I know you? Do I even want to be friends with you? And I think, I think in this context, we kind of talked about the beginning, but it's really easy to want to look internal. Like, oh, you're hurting me. Why are you doing this to me? Like, mm -hmm. I'm a better person. Yeah. Like, can't you see? Um, but choosing to turn it outward and be like, how can I love them through this? Like, how can I be the godly example to them? Like, oh my goodness, I can't imagine how hard that would be. We were really good friends. Mm -hmm. Like, we did good things and bad things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Together. And like, now they don't have me. And now I'm not going to sympathize with them when they come to me. It's like, we're not going to be like, girl, do you. And we're not going to be like, yeah, go get drunk or whatever. Yeah. Like, we're going to be like calling them away mm -hmm. from it. And yeah, I just think loving them through that and letting them, even just giving them the space to decide if they want to be, like not walking away from them. You know, I think there's situations where if someone's causing you to sin, you probably should step back yeah. from that relationship. Yeah. But if that's not the case, being steadfast and being a godly present in their life, but then also not being hurt if they do choose to not want to be around you anymore. Yeah. Because I think giving them that space to really grieve. So did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. It did. Yeah, yeah good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to go back in time. But yeah, that's a that's difficult. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Especially if you really care for the person. Yes. To yeah. like, Almost letting them go. Yeah. 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 So anything that I didn't mention that you have found helpful for you in that in the context? I would say grace. Yeah. Similar answer. But I also still want to be a friend to them. Yes. Even if I'm not going to be what they need. Yeah. Knowing, as long as they know that I'm still there, yes. I might not give the answers they want to hear. Right. But I'm still there. Absolutely. And I like, I like that. Mm -hmm. I want my friends to always know that. Yeah. But then we're yeah. not going anywhere. No. Yeah, that's so good. Thank you, Chloe. Of course. I feel Thanks like for I having me. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you guys so much for listening today. And I cannot wait to continue this season with you. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to follow us on our other social media platforms. We don't want you to miss out on any future content. Thank you so much again, guys. I hope you have a great day. And I want you to know I am personally praying that your roots stay strong.